Okay, welcome everybody. This is our weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. It's US election week. Obviously, the US heads to the polls tomorrow. And we'll find out the results, theoretically, early Wednesday. If it's really close, it could last longer. Obviously, that's really what's driving markets at the moment. We're seeing a big risk on rally in markets today. We'll have a look at some charts there. It's quite amazing how these these turnarounds in sentiment always happen near big support areas, near big resistance areas. And that's clearly what we're seeing in some of the key markets. The US 30, gold, uh, the dollar to some extent. We've got the risk warning on the screen here. We're in the last, heading into the last page. Any questions at all, please just fire them through the the Q and A box or the participants. Uh, sorry, the Q and A or the chat window. And I'm happy to go over any questions you have. If something I'm talking about, some other asset class you wanted to look at, please just let me know. Got two words to say, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so, you <can miss. laughs> no? so, this webinar should last around 30 minutes. Okay. Now, I think, obviously, as I said, the US election is front and center here. And we've had a few big pieces of news. Obviously, the Fed recently, uh, non farm payrolls on Friday, the Bank of England last week. Lots of stuff going on, but um, hard to get away from uh, from the U.S. election. It's really driving sentiment as we run up into it, and we're expecting a big start to the U.S. stock market. So let's look at the U.S. 30 here. Our proxy for the Dow Jones, and as I mentioned, crazy how these um, supports play out. So this was our. Well, we've been in this tight range for what's pretty much. Uh, couple of months now. We had that we were pushing into record highs, weren't able to make a, much of a new high here, a bit of a false break. Markets rolled over badly, but then just went sideways since. And it was that June uh, September twelfth low that basically capped this this latest leg down and we gapped higher. And we've gapped above these various la uh, various levels of resistance. So now these are support on the on any pullback. It's uh, it's very hard to call a direction here. It's obviously just very contingent on the election result, whether we break up or down out of this price range. There's a downward bias according to this falling trend line, uh, but the support has held. Should we get a move back into here? You know that that will be a um, high probability opportunity because we've got the downward trend line and we've got these series of peaks here. Uh, but should you know should the fact the fact that the market's got that high, you know obviously there's a there's a rising chance of a break higher. Uh, particularly you know when the result comes out, you can probably expect another kind of gap type move like this. It will be happening in the early hours in the US. Um, so it will probably be while UK markets are open. It could be just before they open on Wednesday. So in terms of open markets, probably gold and currencies are going to be the ones that are going to be able to immediately react. Obviously through our platforms, you will be able to place a trade. Um, but uh, you know, they're the, the, obviously the, the Dow Jones is not actually open. So. <clears throat> So there we go. That's the US 30. Um, let's look at UK stocks. Now again, quite crazy how this support's working. We had this rising trend line through these two lows. Um, <clears throat> you, know, you, can, you had the trend line there. The alternative was to have just two areas of, um, of support from here and here. And obviously the market's pulled away just before reaching that, that old low. So this support has held, this rising trend line has held. So we obviously had this this uh, downward trend 
since since making a high of a, uh, uh, since touching those old record highs. So all kind of working as we'd expect here. We hit the old record high. Market's in quite a big pullback from there because obviously that is a major resistance. Um, we had a big fall in the market. We've come back and the, the market ran out of steam. Um, people took profits, um, went short the market at the old highs. Now this is obviously an inflection point here. Does the market go on to, to hold having made another higher low? Or does it make a lower low? And obviously that changes the environment somewhat. You know, then we would start to look at more longer term bearish bias. At the moment, even though we've seen a sharp decline, you know, still we've got to look at the fact that um, on this weekly chart, it's, it's held this low. It's in fact, because it didn't even touch it, it's made a higher low. Looking on the shorter time frame charts, if we're looking for this rebound to continue, uh, you can see that we're running in some resistance here. So I think this would be, you know, given the momentum in the market, it would be a riskier short for what, uh, you know, what would be a, I think having, with this trend line having held, and maybe again, if you are placing trades today or tomorrow, it, you know, really, whether you like it or not, it's a trade on the result of the US election. If you think that uh, Hillary might clinch it, then there's bound to be a bit more uncertainty at some point. We don't know what the high is going to be yet, as in I'm just putting this line in. I don't know if this um, 6800 will be the high of today. We might still push a bit higher. But at the moment, you can see that our 61.8, 78.6, nice pullback zone, sits right around 6100 and sits right in the middle of this, this gap that we saw this morning. So should the market get back into there, you know, that would be for me a, a juicier spot for playing a, a Clinton victory and a, and a further rebound of this UK 100. We might not get there is obviously the risk. If we do get there, we can break lower, of course. Um, but you know, it does look like a bit of market structure has been broken up here. We're taken above this short term high. Uh, but we're looking a bit overextended. So maybe there's a scope for rolling over and uh, we can see some further opportunity there. So, you know, I think the the way to, to look at, you know, we've obviously seen a sharp down move. We've run into this um, area of long-term support. We've pushed up quite quickly, shown a lot of demand in this area, taken out of the old high here, showing a bit of a shift in the market structures. And these are lower highs, lower lows. We've made a higher high. So where do we make, you know, where does the higher low come in? Um, you know, the 50% is going to be in and around here. Um, or we could maybe push into the 6100 again. Um, should we get a little sentiment wobble for some election type news, perhaps? Maybe oil prices drop again, some prices lower. Um, there might be some opportunity presented in that area. And then obviously down below this long term support, and then obviously we've got to change our game plan a little bit. That might be where uh, we'll decide to um, uh, decide to change our emphasis somewhat. So, um, just got your your message, Hugh. In terms of the uh, the two one hundred, okay, we're covering it here. I hope this makes sense to you. I mean, generally, if you know, if you're interested in more of the fundamental idea of the influence of the U.S. election on the um, on the FTSE one hundred, or indeed some of the other markets, um, one thing to look at would be just right on the CMC Markets homepage. Um, here, you can see we've got. How will the Wall Street react to the U.S. presidential election, etc., etc.? On the U.S. election, and um, you know, uh, Michael's written something on how it will affect sterling. Um, I've written something on how it affect U.K. stocks, i.e., twenty-one hundred, etc. These, are, you know, that was written a couple of weeks ago, but I think most of it holds. You know, the general idea being that um, you know, global equity markets are probably going to pretty much move in sync. Um, the one area of global equities which isn't traded as heavily on our platforms anyway is um, 
uh, emerging markets, there's perhaps a little bit more uncertainty around the performance there because they tend to do better under a weakening dollar and should the status quo be maintained through a Hillary Clinton victory, which would be good for stock markets, it'll also be good for the US dollar probably, um, which is uh, not so good for emerging markets and emerging market currencies. I hope that all makes sense, but certainly have a look at um, yes, I mean certainly have a look at that homepage if you haven't done so already. Some some good info and stats and things on there. Even if you're just a bit intrigued to, to learn what the election's all about, I've got some good stuff on there. Now let's switch gears and have a look how things are working out in uh, in Europe. Again, surprise, surprise, a major support level has held and we've seen a big gap higher. So certainly, you know. The resistance held, so you know obviously these things aren't perfect. We're pipped above it. Uh, you know a few people will have tight stops above this high. You know they got taken out. So obviously what do you have if you're if you if you're selling the market, you've obviously got a stop loss to buy it back. You know if you're a big institutional seller, you're looking for uh, liquidity to be able to place a sell order. You need people buying. So you know these uh, stops get taken out up here by the big banks and uh, the market runs lower. Now we're into the support, you know, we've seen a slight bullish bias because we didn't actually need to drop through the lows here, we actually managed to bounce before we even got there. You know, we took out the, the you know, this low here maybe, um, these lows here, uh, we took out this low here where some people had stops run down here, lots of liquidity down here, buying it up. So, you know, a bit like the U.S. stock market, we have rebounded off the bottom of the range. Um, you know, now we're now we're in no man's no man's land um, because we're right in the middle, and really, depending on the election result, the market can break into higher and lower. Okay, let's switch gears from equities to currencies. I was going a bit in depth into the euro actually. In the euro again, another interesting example where the um, you know where a resistance level has worked out quite nicely. So okay, so we're, we're on the daily chart here. Um, you know, we look, obviously all in true, we're all very familiar with this chart. Um, we rebound. We basically. Dipped below this uh, this support over here around the the 109 mark. Um, we probably had a strong rally up above 111, but 111 into uh, 111.50 and this previous um, area of support have proved to be resistance, and the market's dropped away. Again, these um, support and resistance areas are perfect, but you can see on the short time frame, this is clearly being respected. So again, market rolled over. Some people would have got a bit enthusiastic and gotten short the market down here after this big down day. Obviously, again, stop losses above here, um, and then the big sellers come in and sell it down again. And we have taken out that low, just about. So a slight bearish bias here from hitting this big resistance level. We have seen some evidence here that the market structure is breaking down a bit. Equally on the um, the RSI. Um, I would call that a head and shoulders pattern there on the RSI, um, indicating that we should see something akin to, um, if you take the height of the pattern to be, oh, the wrong way, to be that, uh, okay, let's try that again. If you take this as the height of the pattern, you know, you'd expect this is the 100% um, uh, extension down here, and it works out quite well with the 78.6% extension of this rally up from this particular low. 
so and in around this old high so this one say is a bit of kind of cluster of support that the market potentially could be running down to, to test what is the general bias here well we've had a big run higher um, but overall we're quite range bound and so I think the fact that we've run into quite a solid area of support turned resistance we've seen some evidence of the structure breaking to me it looks like there's a good chance we can continue that down to this and um, down to this support here and that again we're, we're, we're basically looking for the the opposite to happen for the market to start pushing higher again from there should this give way then I think then we're looking back down to these one and nine lows again in terms of maids you know what can actually do that this week um, you know, in terms of uh, European news, um, we've got some industrial production data, but you know that's you know that's um, probably not going to be as significant as with the eurozone as it will be from the UK. Um, we have Chinese data, which can potentially wobble things a bit, but in terms of major marking European data. Um, I would say there's, there's probably not too much here in this week. Again, it's going to be the, the, the US election that probably drives sentiment for the remainder of the week. So, you know, I'd say probably what we're looking at here is um, Trump win, good for Euro dollar, um, Clinton win. Uh, negative for euro dollar and you know obviously the same for the other currency pairs so look at sterling so it's it's been very tricky to um, to price retracements according to Fibonacci's because so many different charts have a different bottom in terms of where that uh, where the um, where the flash crash ended, arguably the better thing to do is just to use the kind of the recent more stable prices we've had as the um, uh, as the as the proper low and kind of just discount the spike. Um, but it just so happened that I thought that actually worked out quite well. This kind of support area here, where the market really rolled over, um, just happened to be the 61.8. We've taken out this little bit of structure here, so I think that you know the signs are good that sterling is going to hold up. Um, a further, we're finding support from the round number at now at 124 um, on the 4-hour chart. Nice little reversal candle here, a little hammer pattern. Um, so this this could be it, but I'd say you know down here is obviously a, you know this is the form of form of resistance that we had in place for a number of weeks, a couple of weeks. Um, so that would be a um, logical area for support. And we've also got these, these other pivot points down here that um, could turn the market around, should be, should be different to those. Again, for UK data, it's mainly just that manufacturing industrial production data. Um, you know, more questions as to how has uh, you know how's the UK performing in uh, that will be that will be the tail end of Q3 because that data is a bit um, delayed. You know, how's it how's it been doing post um, <clears throat> post Brexit? We do, also, we do also have trade balance data as well on Wednesday, uh, but as I said, it's, um, it's the industrial production data, which, is, which will be interesting for the revisions to, to the GDP data as well. You know, the backdrop to this is that GDP has been growing much faster than Bank of England predicted last week. Bank of England had to lift their growth forecasts, admit that they've been much too dour on the UK economy and, and the effect of Brexit and, um, and basically sort of backtrack on, on cutting interest rates further. So um, without the imminent um, cut of interest rates and more QE on the cards from the Bank of England, 
you know, that's you know, there's not really a big reason to, to drive sterling lower here. Obviously, yeah. it's reacting to the political news. Um, that political news was only important in the context of what the Bank of England is going to do. And it seems like the Bank of England aren't going to be too heavy, heavy handed. Uh, they've actually said they're going to be more neutral in terms of where policy goes. Said that um, they're not going to tolerate that higher inflation. So, you know, when inflation data comes out, that will be particularly important because if you start getting up towards that 2% target, uh, they've said they're not going to tolerate it for you know, too much higher than that. So that's when we start thinking actually maybe the bias is switching from, from neutral, which they've said at the moment, to, to actually the chance of a hike in interest rates. And, uh, and that obviously, you know, that really would, I think, go a long way to unwind this big down move that we had in the pound in and around Brexit. That's, that's the general context of things. Um, at the moment, we're still kind of putting in a bit of a base pattern and um, still scope, given the skittishness politically, for a push down into these areas. And I think that actually could be an opportunity. Let's switch to the yen. This will be, um, you know, uh, because of the sensitivity of the uh, dollar yen to, uh, to treasuries, this should be an interesting one to trade. Um, in and around the US election, and obviously it's going the currency markets 24 hours, it's going to be open when we know the result. Um, I'm zoomed in on quite a short term chart here. Uh, let me zoom out just to give that a bit more perspective. Um, here we are, this is a triangle pattern. We're, we're, we've been trying to break out and achieve the triangle objective. Um, which, uh, actually, I've forgotten what it is. Let's draw it on again. Basically, one ten, the the round figure. Should this triangle break out as it should, almost on the money. Um, we broke down through the the twenty period, uh, twenty day moving average, but we found support nicely at the fifty. Uh, the the twenty still nicely above the fifty. Um, I think that kind of this uptrend should be intact, and we're seeing that work out quite well. Um, not only the 50 day moving average, but again, if we drop down to maybe the four hour, you know, we can see it's this big reaction point here where we've seen the market work. So we saw a big drop down through it, but it wasn't able to be sustained. We saw a reaction back. And then that's when I had my um, short, out, short time frame because we could see this is the drop down through this long term area of support. We saw the market push up to it couldn't take out those old highs but dipped down then it took out this high showing a bit of a kind of change in structure so if you take this low to this high it dropped down nicely to the 61.8 um, touched it you know pretty much precisely there and was rallied up through the 100 percent extension which initially caused a bit of resistance up here and we're up to the sort of 104.50 type handle now so it's looking quite positive for dollar yen. Obviously, that's assuming a Clinton victory. Um, in the short term, you know, the election is going really to kind of dictate whether this this break, this this trend can continue higher and break out up into to 106 and making its way up up here. You know, for it, for it to actually get there, you know, that's when we're going back to looking at um, the Fed. And uh, the position for a hike in December, and, and the Bank of Japan, and uh, all the rest of it. So we're doing all right for time here. Actually, I will before I forget. I'm going to have a look at um, just show you copper, because copper's been on an absolute tear in the last couple of weeks. This is our daily chart. <coughs> um, you know, here was the bottom of the range down here. We never got to that. The the sort of interim support held up. So you can see here was the swing low here, swing low down there, and um, you know when the market came down didn't didn't even need to break through it again. It's just whooshed up higher. But this this again even though obviously we we've gone up almost vertically from 210 up to 230 and a, a really nice move. Um, you know here we're in the resistance zone again. So we're seeing a, the beginnings of a pullback. Um, so this is an area which carries some sort of potential for opportunity. So, you know, have a look what's happening. Um, first signs of a breakdown on the hourly chart here. Let's see where this 
where this low forms 228 for the time being um, you know, this is a little interim breakdown because um, we had quite a large run up here you know this would be the kind of main area we want to see a breakdown from obviously we're at, you know that would be much lower prices but it is that kind of 225 mark but if we could put a low down here, come up and take it out again, then maybe we'll get something a, a bit higher up. But um, again, we haven't, we haven't, we don't know if this is the low yet. But um, you know, start putting your fibs on and, and seeing maybe in the 61.8786 area, in and around uh, 230. Let's see if it, if 230 can hold if we get another retest. If it starts to roll over again. You know, that's when we know this longer term resistance area is um, playing out as we expect. Go straight to, to, to gold, just because again, if you're not if you're not trading currencies, I would say gold would be one of the other ones to play in and around the, the U.S. election. We've got a report on um, on the possible effect of on gold, but it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? I mean, gold is a safe haven. Trump source of instability, um, Clinton not potentially as much, and so <clears throat> you know, general idea being here that is that gold is selling off. Um, because of this FBI news from yesterday that uh, they, you know they basically let Clinton off the hook um, for, for her emails again and so it was that um, a new FBI probe that had swung the polls back in the favor of Trump now with a couple of days to go the FBI is saying well there's nothing to worry about those. so that theoretically positive for Clinton and again another example where you know this this move higher in gold is has had more legs than I expected it to have We've got the 61.8 percent on the chart, but um, you know I thought maybe it would roll over but before that, uh, but it hasn't done. But you know it shows again the advantage of having some patience when trading, because you know if you just waited for the for the old resistance, uh, the old support turned resistance, and the 61.8 percent retracement of the down move has nicely worked out, um, and it's all working quite quite nice technical fashion because the market's now found support uh, just below that low here at the old high so first signs of, uh, of a rebound should we get through this low you know I'd suggest that this high here that you can see on the, the daily chart is the first swing in this kind of price range here yeah. In and around the 1275 mark. So it's 1285, it's kind of holding us up at the moment. 1275 on another move lower. Um, you know, this was a big dramatic move down in gold, and we basically got traced of that, having come into this fairly substantial area of support at 1250. So, you know, again, depending yeah, on the election result, okay. you know, if Clinton gets in, the the next reading from that is okay. U.S. election sort of out of the way. Uh, monetary policy, oh, okay. Back to expecting a rate hike from the Fed in December. You know, data in the U.S. has looking, been looking fairly fairly decent. So, you know, maybe you can expect them to start hiking a bit more frequently next year, and um, that that would be a bad thing for gold. And um, you know, see gold move from back below 12.50 again. So this this could be the beginnings of that. So obviously, you miss that initial move lower. Uh, but if we do, uh, if we do get a pullback, and again, a bit like if you're planning a, a long on the stock market or a long on the dollar, short euro. Um, you know, if you're expecting a Clinton win, you know, look for a retracement into the gap for potentially the market to, to run over again. And we'll just round things quickly off here with oil. So there's been a there's been an earthquake in uh, Oklahoma, so that's supporting oil prices. And lo and behold, it's happened just as we've hit a significant support area at the 45 mark on Brent. You know, I pointed that I put this 
very simple chart out on Twitter on Friday, just saying that um, Brent is a key support, um, and uh, you know we had a little run through it, and, and it's starting to show signs of holding it. Um, that's not to say this support necessarily is going to hold up for too long. You know, fundamentally, what's driving oil at the moment is the prospect for a deal uh, by OPEC. And on Friday, uh, the Saudis have uh, actually apparently threatened uh, to totally um, go back on the on the deal and start ramping up production again, should Iran not uh, do their part. So chances of a deal are actually not looking too good, hence the sharp drop in prices. Nonetheless, we're at this significant support level. Again, it's a matter of, well, waiting for a daily reversal pattern if that's what you do. Um, you know, looking for another indicator pattern if you, if, you know, if that's how you pinpoint your reversals or, you know, maybe drop into a shorter time frame. Um, we've not taken out this structure high yet, um, but I think, you know, we've had a kind of decent little pop. Um, you know, quite a big reaction move here, but then we did drop down again, so... You know, if we can get a move up through here and then a pullback, you know, that's when maybe you can start looking for opportunity again. Also, incidentally, if you are strictly a gold trade, uh, an oil trader rather, um, again, this Oklahoma situation clouds it slightly. Maybe the market bouncing off of uh, um, support and, and uh, all the rest of it. But what I think you could probably say is that um, oil is reacting more to a risk on environment. Um, a potential of a Clinton victory than it is to, um, than it would be, because uh, gold oil is moving higher today. Um, if it was reacting purely to the dollar, which is also higher today, then oil should obviously theoretically be lower. So um, it looks like oil reacting more on, reacting more to the kind of risk on environment rather than the dollar environment. Should Clinton get in, Clinton get in, looks like should be positive oil. Fake Trump get in should be negative oil. If um, today's price action is anything uh, of any guide, but well, I think that's it. Um, yep, should be a very interesting week. These, uh, you know, the U.S. election only comes once every four years. Um, we've got plenty of information on that hot page, as I mentioned. Um, so let's let's see how it all pans out, and uh, we'll talk to you at the same time next week to discuss it. Uh, thanks very much. It's Jasper signing out.